Hi there, how are you? Good, how are you doing? Not too bad, thanks. We, we are namesakes. Yeah, you know it. <laughs> um, okay, congratulations first of all um, on the new album. I actually managed to get a copy of it yesterday only, but uh, it hasn't left uh, my CD player since then. Oh, thank you very much. And uh, as I say, I, I, I was lucky enough because your, your debut album uh, wasn't released in our, in our country. Um, so I ended up having to go to Spain to get it, but I did. I did get it. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a excellent, excellent stuff. I'm glad you like it. Yeah, that's good to actually Thank you. speak with you because I have lots of questions. Sure. <laughs> sure, no problem. Okay, could you, um, as I say, just for the benefit of people who obviously don't know who Seven Mary Three are, could you could you give us sort of a um, a short rundown, you know, um, of, of your history? Uh, as far back as say as I say just as far back as say the um, getting your deal with uh, with Mama. Sure. Um, yeah, we you know we were four guys who went to school together and um, we were friends and we just decided to uh, start playing in a band, start playing music, and um, we put out an album uh, on our own uh, when we first started playing, and that kind of got some attention. And led to uh, labels offering us a deal. And we recorded our last album, American Standard, with uh, Mammoth Records. Uh, and that did pretty well. It did rather. <laughs> and, uh, and then we, we just, uh, in last uh, September, October, I recorded this last album, Rock Crown, uh, on Atlantic Records. So we moved up to Atlantic. And, uh, that's pretty much the short history of of Seven Mary Three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was, I was uh, reading on, on on how the band got their name, which is to say you've got you've got numerous pages, obviously on the on the internet, and uh, which I think is, is also nice for you, obviously besides your official page. Uh, oh yeah. That's uh, interesting how you came up came up with the name from a, from from the Chips TV series. Yeah. <laughs> of all places, eh? Oh yeah. You know we're. Uh, we were trying to find a name for the band when we were first starting out, and, um, you know, we were, we were coming up with all these, like, serious, uh, deep meaning names, and we said, you know, enough of this, um, we are we kind of tired of that, so yeah. we were just watching TV one day, and it just popped up, and Casey was like, you know, this is going to be the name of our band. Right, yeah, because it actually works. Uh, you know, um, speaking to a lot of people, they didn't even know that that was the case. So that, I don't think people make the assimilation to uh, to that, you know, directly, yeah. which is great anyway, you know. Yeah. yeah. But now, it's like getting back to American Standard and obviously the single, uh, Cumbersome, I mean, that was, uh, I mean, for a, a true sort of debut act in the sense of it being a commercially available album, um, I mean, it, it, it was, I mean, it sold... Uh, um, I mean, it's over a million albums in America, from what I believe. Um, yeah. What do you think it was sort of a, um, a, a, about that that sort of gave you that kind of that kind of success, uh, success with the album? Well, the song was, um, you know, the song had a good uh, good groove to it. Um, you could you could move to it. You could even could dance to it. And um, I don't know, it's kind of something new and. Uh, it had a nice chorus you could sing along to. And I'm not, I personally, you know, those are the kind of songs we really like, and the songs that do the best for us are the ones that people move to, and uh, they can really sing the words and, uh, you know, put the smile on their face. Mm -hmm. did, and, um, did you actually expect it to do as well as it did? No, I didn't. Yeah. You know, that's also one of those elements that you kind of can't predict, you know, that as many people are going to like it as did. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, because the, the album enjoyed sort of, I mean, it's still selling now, uh, still selling well now. I mean, it, it enjoyed a nice longevity, which uh, a lot of albums, you know, today especially don't, don't normally enjoy, you know, a, a, a nice run on the charts uh, with an album and also, as I say, with the album, album success. Do you think that has a lot to do with the fact that you guys were on the road a lot and actually playing? Yeah, we played a lot. You know, we played 200 some shows last year. And um, we'll, we'll probably do close to that this year as 
well. Um, quickly, because that's that's where uh, that's how we we started, and that's how it's uh, the best way to kind of make a living, I guess, mm. and, and, and play for people. Sure. Um, because you know that's where the relationship starts. You know, I think between the, the band and the audience is one on one. And are you still are, are you still sort of able to play smaller venues, or have you found that obviously with the with your phenomenal success with American Standard that you that you're now having to sort of book yourselves into bigger venues? Well, actually, we we could be playing bigger venues, but uh, we're going once again this time. We're going out and playing uh, small clubs, like around 500 people. And why is that? Uh, you know, it, it just breaks it down again. Breaks it down to the beginning. Uh, sort of more intimate. Might, yeah, we might uh, we might play larger places later on, but uh, you know, when you're first starting out, it's, it's it's great to be able to look out and, and pretty much see every face in the club, uh, and uh, really get the uh, the interaction between band and crowd is really pretty intense uh, when you when you got that size of a crowd. Sure. So it's it's fun. It's fun and a good time all the way around. Mm-hmm. And and there was uh, as I said, um, reading again from the bargain sign that there was there was sort of a basic theme throughout American Standard. Does does Rock Clown um, have a similar kind of feel or or not? Yeah, um, Rock Clown is um, we wrote. Um, while we were on the road all last past year and a half and all those songs were written in the back of our bus and they all have to do with uh, the things we were thinking about and experiencing uh, while we were playing music and while we were uh, in the uh, commercial music world and uh, so they they all have to do with um, getting out in the world pretty much for the first time was it sort of a, a um, like a, not a diary, but sort of a, a wake up call for you in the sense that you know coming away from being sort of a, an indie band in the sense going into sort of a commercial you know a doggy dog kind of market for you? Yeah, yeah, kind of in a way. Um, you know, you, you uh, just just the discovery of. Uh, the, the strange mix and interaction between music and its passion and uh, money mm-hmm. and uh, business and um, uh, trying, trying to fit the two together and uh, still inspire people, you know? Sure, sure. I mean, because that must be a, a, a difficult thing now because um, I know Atlantic have made you a priority. Um, yes. So, you know, the whole focus changes and I mean, it, it must make in a way, you know, that you are trying to retain all the elements of why you probably started your band in the first place. Yeah, exactly. And that's you know, that's one of the reasons why we're still playing the small places and still doing the shows all ourselves and stuff. Mm-hmm. It's, it's still trying to retain that element of, you know, that we are a group of people and a, not some plastic product. Yeah, so yeah absolutely. And, and I think the fans appreciate that. Oh, yeah, they do. Mm-hmm. And um, as I say, what, what was interesting to me was um, recording at uh, Daniel Lenoir's Kingsway Studios. Um, uh, recently, well, a couple of months ago, I did an interview with Better Than Ezra. And uh, they, they were talking about uh, about the studios because they also did their uh, last album there. And there's a, a supposedly a, a ghost, or not a ghost, but a, a, there's a, what would you call it, a, a ghostly element to the studios. Uh, did, did, uh, did you find that at all? Yeah, you know, Kingsway's got a certain something to it. Um, it's a very old place. It's a big, huge, like, mansion house, and uh, we live there and record there, eat there, do everything, and it does have a certain spirit flowing through it, um, a certain feel and vibe, a soul of its own, and it, it gets into your music, and <laughs> you can't help it, um, it's that, that mojo thing, you know, mm, yeah, well, that's... New Orleans. 
Yeah, yeah, that's the thing, you know, because I think that's why a lot of bands actually like to record there because of the whole, um, the, you know, the, the atmosphere and the and the feel, and as you say, the history behind it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And uh, as I said, um, most of the new songs, as you said, written while you were sort of on the road. Um, what what is it about touring that actually creates songs? Is it is it actually just the experience to you that you have to sort of put it down and actually write about it, or is it does it just affect you in such a way that you that it inspires you to actually put songs and, and put new tracks together? Well, it, it's a lot of a lot of everything, you know. Um, sometimes it's, sometimes you get in a, a rut after playing many, many shows where, you know, you're kind of really bored with playing the material. Sure. And so you, you're like, man, let's write some tunes, you know, so we can be inspired again and have that feeling again. So you go on the back of the bus. And then, you know, we wrote several tunes about, about very specific instances that we were in. Um, uh, it took place, and we were in the back of the bus, and we thought we wanted to write a song about it, you know. Right, right, right. Um, as well as meeting certain people, um, certain fans inspired, certain feelings. Mm-hmm. And, you know, as well as uh, being out there and, and having people in the industry, you know, just talk to you, and that inspires so, certain feelings as well. So. so it's a, much of everything and pretty much being uh, it was our first time kind of going out into the world and out into the you know the US and seeing the country and stuff but seeing it from a far different perspective than a tourist so, so. and uh, that, that inspires a strange and different feeling so that's, that's what the album centers around great great and 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 did you feel sort of any added stress um you know recording this album based on the fact that american standard had sort of done so well um you know as as, as your debut release i mean there's that traditional sort of sophomore jinx you know that they always talk about um with an album were you guys sort of aware of that or were you just sort of going out and putting out your you know putting out your music uh, we weren't really worried about it um, because you know, the one the utmost confidence I have in something in the world is in you know that we can write good songs and we'll continue to do it. Um, as far as like a standpoint from a critical commercial acclaim, um, you know, I don't know. If, those things aren't aren't very tangible. Yeah, yeah, it's just yeah, it's just that the industry, you know, always does that, which is terribly unfair, I think, on a on a band when they put these kind of pressures because they say, well, okay, you know, you've had to break with that first album, um, and then they focus on you on your on your second album. Yes. Yeah, and you know, we're starting to get that that we didn't get on our first album. We're starting to have people really scrutinize us and also to go back and scrutinize the first album and the first time it happens you're like whoa you know what's going on here but it's not something very tangible that it sure. quickly goes away or moves to a different place sure. so don't really worry about that much things worry about is whether you're making good music um, and if we are then there's no pressure we're not worried right 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 and if and if you have to sort of um, look at the band what would you say sort of your strength as a band is that sort of has given you the kind of focus that you've uh, that you've got now um I would say that um, we we started out as as friends um, first. Um, all four of us are friends, and for most of us in the band, this is our first band. Um, and this this is something that we all created, and, and we're very conscious of that. Um, we're very conscious of this child that, that is our band. Uh-huh. And um, it's just kind of a, a strong bond. Mm, sort of a passion, yeah. Yeah, and you know, I don't. We don't. I don't think we still have a uh, firm grasp on what our you know, universal goal. 
goals as far as the band that we want to accomplish or you know, if we have any we're, we're, we're still very young we just started out and we're, so it's probably we're a good working, thing yeah, it's probably yeah we're working we're working towards something that uh, you know is yet to be discovered I think sure no, as you said it's probably better to do that than sort of give yourselves you know goals that uh, as I say ultimately aren't really up to you in the sense that um, you know the people out there will be the ones who you decide, you know, what your future is going to be. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Tony Morris, um, as far as uh, producing uh, the new album, um, what did he actually bring bring to the album? Well, Tom did the last album with us as yes. well. Yes. Excuse me. And um, Tom is he's a he's a very good engineer, and he has um, good assistants that help him. And he also uh, shares some of the similarities in the music that and musicians that we admire and admired when we were uh, young, such as the Beatles and old music that has a lot of melody and um, a lot of space and simplicity. And so, you know, it's, it's pretty much our relationship is uh, Jason and I and the band. Um, discussing with Tom the sounds and the feel we want to get for each song and then Tom being able to get that um, in an engineering capacity so so it's um, it's a good relationship we got right and uh, as I say if, if, if you have to sort of look at the single biggest change uh, for you um, to say now with with the release of the new album um, what would you say that's that is for you you know I mean from to say being the the smaller band to obviously now being a focus um, a focused band for for the likes of Atlantic um you know actually as far as uh within the band um I, I can't tell that much of a change except that um we're more confident that uh we're going to be able to play music for a little longer than we had ever anticipated, you know. Um, as far as um, not having to do something else and play music at the same time, but being able to do this all together all the time. Um, you know, we've, we've spent the last couple of years uh, all together every day and yeah, uh, yeah that can be so, um, we're going to keep doing it and there's no real change uh, whenever whenever we have a lot of time off you know maybe so, something will change but um, you know we're we've already written you know like eight or nine new tunes that are just you know, slamming great songs great, great. so we're just keeping we're just pressing on great great and as I said now that you, um, you you're going to be touring again um, now um, obviously the main focus will be on the new album um, but uh, as I said will you be doing anything different to say besides keeping to the small venues and sound as far as your live shows are concerned uh, no, they'll be they'll be pretty similar. We're gonna play a lot of the old stuff and a lot of the new stuff. The show will probably be a little longer. Um, we'll probably um, probably try and change the songs up a little bit. You know, do a little different stuff to them and play a couple of covers and stuff. It'll be a little different, but uh, it'll still have the same feel, same vibe. And um, are you sort of looking outside of America? I mean, obviously, America's the focus at the moment. That sort of uh, back to Europe and uh, sort of new territories for you as well. Is that in the pipeline? Uh, it is. Uh, we've we've been talking about it um, quite extensively, actually, and we're, um, we're hoping to get outside the U.S. and spend some time, uh, an extended period of time, if possible, uh, going to other places, other territories. And you know, I really hope it can happen. Mm, great, great, great. Jason, can I ask you one last favor, if I may? Sure. Would you do an ID for me? I sure can. Great, because this is how going to go out in a show of mine. Um, uh, the show has a very cliched name. It's called The Cutting Edge. Uh, okay. <laughs> so if you, if you could uh, so play with that, and uh, whenever you're ready, just uh, shout it out. Okay. Uh, 
Just from the cutting edge? The cutting edge, yeah. All right. You are too. Okay? Whenever you're ready. Thank you. The cutting edge. Okay. Bye-bye. Great. Could you perhaps say, hi, this is Jason from 7 Mary 3, and you're listening to the cutting edge as well? <laughs> sure, man. Okay, no then. problem. Three and you're listening to the cutting edge. Excellent. Thanks very, very much.